Old school Raw. Hmm. You know, I really like when WWE kind of does the old school Raw. It makes us, as a younger generation of fans, kind of appreciate the olden days of the WWE and how it was formatted and the TV and everything and what the ring looked like. It, it makes Raw a little bit fresher, I would say. It makes Raw look much more fresher than it normally is. But the bottom line is, it just felt like a current age 2013 Raw. Now we're in 2014. Same shit happening in 2013. We kick off the show with Ric Flair coming out. The Nature Boy, woo! Ric Flair coming down to the ring after talking to the San Francisco 49ers. Does the usual Ric Flair promo. Out comes Randy Orton, and it's the usual, oh, here comes the heel that used to know the legend. Oh, man, Randy Orton's hugging Ric Flair. You know, they're, they're reminiscing on good times. Randy Orton's like, oh, I shouldn't face John Cena. And Ric Flair's like, to be the man, you gotta beat the man, Randy. Woo! And, and, and this makes no fucking sense to me. Makes no fucking sense to me. Randy Orton is our WWE Heavyweight Champion, correct? He beat John Cena at TLC. He didn't have any outside help. He did it cleanly for the most part. He beat John Cena clean. Yeah, sure, you could say, well, what about the handcuffs? Yeah, you know what? That was just a heel tactic that Randy Orton used. But doesn't mean he didn't beat he beat John Cena dirty. He beat John Cena clean in an anything goes TLC match. So why in the hell should Orton be debating that he shouldn't face John Cena? Why in the hell is Randy Orton debating this logic? Randy Orton should not be facing John Cena at the Royal Rumble. He already beat John Cena. And why is Ric Flair coming out here saying to beat a man? You gotta beat the man. Randy Orton already beat John Cena. And uh, apparently John Cena, this is how old school he can get. He will wear blue shorts instead of the yellow tan shorts we're used to seeing him wearing every week now. Still looks like the same old John Cena. Didn't come out on a throwback jersey. Didn't come out to word life. Still the same John Cena. Same, the same crap. I love Ric Flair, but I'm sorry. This promo was boo-boo, garbage, stinky poo. It made no damn sense. Why in the blue hell does Randy Orton need to prove he can beat John Cena when he already did? That makes no sense. And the fact that we don't get to see these guys for the rest of the night is just ridiculous. I mean, Ric Flair we do see later tonight, but he just stands there and does nothing. Makes no damn sense to me. I don't understand how you can have the champion act like the challenger and the challenger act like the champion. Randy Orton's acting like the challenger right now. Acting like he lost the TLC match. Acting like he is not the heavyweight champion. John Cena, even though he has no damn belts on him, he looks more like the champion than Randy Orton. God, now, Biggie Langston taking on Michael McGillicuddy, honestly, wastes a fucking space on the show. It is a waste of fucking space. We know Biggie Langston's gonna win, so what's the point? What is the point of showing us Biggie Langston wrestling this guy? We know he's gonna win, it's not like... Curtis Axel slash Michael McGillis shit, he has a chance. Ryback was on commentary, but who cares about Ryback anymore, WWE? You guys ruined Ryback. Oh my goodness. I thought Dolph Ziggler had the title shot. I thought Dolph Ziggler was the number one contender to the IC champion. Or did that happen at last week's Raw? Did I miss that? Probably missed it, but I'm just saying, this makes no damn sense to me. And then we move on forward. We, we, we move on forward you know, to utter BS, like Oksana being Brie Bella, Oksana getting a push out of random out, who gives a shit, she's hot as hell and I like her, so I'm fine with it, I like Oksana. What other random matches that happened that I can get out of the way, like Kali versus, versus Damian Sandow, is Damian Sandow fired, because didn't he say he was going to quit if he lost his next match, is he fired now, did he quit? Did I have to get the WWE app to see that shit? I mean, back in the old days, you all didn't have a WWE app. I know you guys had a WWE hotline, but you didn't have a WWE app. So, so what, man? Like, is Damian Sandow, did he quit? Or what? Because all I saw was Sergeant Slaughter dancing in the fucking ring with the great Khali. The only old school thing about this segment was that Sergeant Slaughter was friends with Middle Easterns again. That was the only old school thing about this segment that we saw with great Khali, Sergeant Slaughter. And, oh yeah, Rajan Singh. Holy shit, man. I know this guy works for SmackDown, but all of a sudden now, since Natalia's a total diva and Hornswoggle's kind of useless, you're going to pair him up with Raj and Cena again? Oh, my God. Oh, God. 
I think I went through all the bullshit. Zeb Coulter's sign was fucking epic. <laughs> the best defense is offense. I love that sign. Uh, Rhodes Dynasty versus the Real Americans was actually a pretty decent tag match, and that's all I gotta say about that match. Now, let's talk about the juicy stuff, the real storyline tonight on Monday Night Raw. One of the real storylines on tonight, Monday Night Raw, is finally the debut of Daniel Wyatt or Daniel Bryan, whatever the hell you want to call him. <sighs> I'm sorry. Daniel Bryan looks like a freaking janitor. He looks like a damn janitor. What is WWE thinking? Okay, I understand the concept. I get it. You want to try to do something with the Wyatt family, but the problem is... Fans still like Daniel Bryan. They're not going to boo this motherfucker just because he's with the Wyatt family. If anything, you're making the Wyatt family more of a babyface team than you are a heel team. And that whole shit during the match when Rey Mysterio's like, Who? Daniel, are you dear? Daniel, it's me, Rey. It's like, come on, man. Like, throughout all of WWE, throughout their television, when in the blue hell have Rey Mysterio and Daniel Bryan ever been close friends? When? They haven't been close friends at all. Never. Ever. In their lives. Yeah, I know Ray's a good guy and he associates with all the baby faces, but when have Daniel Bryan and Rey Mysterio been such close friends or had a good rivalry that made them friends? Because I can't remember that shit. I don't. I honestly don't. Like, oh, God. And not only that, the Wyatts lose this match. Rey Mysterio and the Usos didn't even get an entrance. They didn't get a damn entrance. And the Wyatts lose. I'm sorry, man. This Daniel Bryan character, this Wyatt family Daniel Bryan, ain't going nowhere. The yes, yes Daniel Bryan and the no, no Daniel Bryan, the go face Daniel Bryan, that was going somewhere. This Daniel Bryan does nothing. It honestly does nothing. You guys can like this character, just know I fucking hate this character. I think it's dumb. That promo segment at the end of the night where Daniel Bryan's like, I teamed with Kane. He's big like you guys. Let me team with you. I can lead you to the promised land. But no, we're going to get Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt taking on, what, the Usos next week on Raw? At least they're building up a match next week for Raw. But, but still, honestly, come on. Too Cool came back, which was fucking awesome. I don't care what anyone says. That was a markout moment. Scotty Too Hotty should have a WWE contract because that motherfucker can still wrestle and he can put over some of the lower card jobber guys, man. Like, shit, Drew McIntyre actually looked legit for, for a while when he big boot Scotty Too Hotty. I was like, damn, Drew McIntyre actually still has shit to do. Why don't you bring Scotty Too Hotty to help elevate some of those lower, lower, lower jobbers? I'm just saying, man, it would make freaking sense. It would make freaking sense. <sighs> Piper's Pit segment was actually pretty entertaining, but, you know, the, the whole thing is obvious. Oh, Roman Reigns, is he the best out of all the S.H.I.E.L.D. guys? I mean, like, WWE, do you think we're like nine years old and we can't fucking see this shit? We all know, as fans, Roman Reigns is bigger. We all know Roman Reigns is technically going to be considered the better S.H.I.E.L.D. member. We all know that. We're not dumb. So why do we need Roddy Piper to freaking put exclamation marks around this? And why did CM Punk come out with the New Age Outlaws when the Shield was about to talk Roddy Piper? I would really, really like to know that. I really would like to know that. It was just kind of random and out there. And honestly, I sh I, they should have said this. Screw the one-on-one -on -one match between CM Punk and Roman Reigns, which should have been saved for a pay-per-view like the Royal Rumble coming up, because I think that would have made more sense. But instead, you do a six-man tag match with the New Age Outlaws and CM Punk. I think that would have been awesome. Hell, Road Dog looked like he was ready to go. Freaking badass Billy Gunn always looks like he's in good shape. Why not do a quick little six-man tag match with CM Punk and the New Age Outlaws taking on the Shield? I think it would have been much better than do, than wasting a pay-per-view quality singles match on Monday Night Raw. Bad News Barrett. As much as I'm not a fan of the gimmick, I felt this was his best bashing of the whole time he's been Bad News Barrett. It wasn't that entertaining, it wasn't that great, but at least it was something for Wade Barrett here tonight, and I would give WWE props on that. Now, Brock Lesnar coming out was a great fucking segment. I really liked this segment, even though it was kind of the same shit. We know Brock Lesnar's dominant, Paul Heyman, you don't need to tell us this. 
Brock Lesnar breaks the arm of Mark Henry with the Kimura, just reminding us, hey, Brock Lesnar, he still has his Kimura. Good booking there, WWE. And then all of a sudden, out comes the big show. Now, you're, you're trying to tell me that big show, who can't be John Cena, a guy who lost to Randy Orton, and a guy who struggled with CM Punk throughout all his career, Brock Lesnar is afraid of this guy? Really? Brock Lesnar is afraid of the Big Show? Okay, I get it. You know, Brock Lesnar and Big Show, they have a good rivalry. Back in the old days of the SmackDown days. We all we all can agree there. They've had a decent rivalry back in the day. But really, how, how are you going to make this Brock Lesnar afraid of the Big Show? Now, I will give WWE credit. They did make Big Show look somewhat decent in this segment. I will give them credit. But honestly, Brock Lesnar should not be afraid of the Big Show. He shouldn't be. If anything, it, like, why would he be afraid of the world's largest athlete when he can take down the world's strongest man? And just answer me that question. Why should he be afraid of the Big Show? I don't mind if they do a Big Show Brock Lesnar match because I find Big Show Brock Lesnar matches actually pretty good. I felt Big Show and Brock Lesnar throughout their career when they haven't had outside interference. They've actually worked well together. So I'm not mad about this. Now we move on to the main event between CM Punk and Roman Reigns, which was a good match. And what we kind of got to notice is the crowd was really behind Roman Reigns. It was kind of like in late 2004. You notice that the crowd started to cheer Batista a little bit more than usual. Roman Reigns is starting to get cheered a little bit more than usual. I was honestly surprised. There were so many Roman Reigns fans there. Um. Like, especially against CM Punk. CM Punk rarely gets booed by WWE audiences. And he was getting kind of booed against Roman Reigns. Holy shit, I was really impressed by this matchup. I kind of wish it happened at a pay-per-view. That's my only complaint with this match is that it didn't happen at a pay-per-view. I feel this match right here between CM Punk and Roman Reigns could have been saved for a Royal Rumble. Could have been saved for a big event like that and make both guys look good and especially make Roman Reigns look strong heading into the Rumble match later in the night. Show that he's an Iron Man. Show that he can wrestle a singles match and then go into the Rumble and almost win it. I think that would look good on Roman Reigns' res resume. Yeah, he beat CM Punk. Yeah, there was outside interference. And I could bitch about how Punk no-sold the spear at the end. But there's no bitching about Jake the fucking snake coming back, baby. Holy shit. When that music hit... Cause we, we all heard rumors, you know, oh, Jake the Snake, he said, he, he said that he might not make it to old school Raw. All of a sudden, when you hear Jake the Snake's theme, I, I started marking out. I was just like, yes, Jake the fucking Snake. Oh, my God. When Jake the Snake came out, shit was awesome. He didn't do the DDT. Damien 2.0, 3.0. Someone comment down below if it's 2.0 or 3.0. I honestly can't remember. Damien 2.0 came out, laid on top of Dean Ambrose, who took the fall for the Snake. I'm fine with that with Dean Ambrose taking the fall for the snake. It seems like Dean Ambrose is a very big wrestling fan and must be a nostalgic moment in his career. I mean, come on. You saw that dude when he was lying down. He had that half smirk. He was like, oh, this is so fucking awesome. And you guys won't lie. If you were in that middle of the ring, you would have a half smirk if Jake the Snake put Damien on you. Whether it's 1.0 or 2.0, baby, you would be excited about that. But seeing Jake the Snake come back and being in the w on WWE TV was fucking awesome. And something that I felt was really good for this old school Raw. Overall, though, this old school Raw did not really do that great for the start of 2014. I felt that some of the stuff they did for the Royal Rumble was kind of like, hey, here it is. It's happening at the Rumble, but they didn't build on to it. Like Batista coming back for the Royal Rumble. I mean, a couple more Batista promos wouldn't hurt, would it? I mean, why not just show Batista winning the 2005 Rumble? I mean, that should get you hyped up a little bit to say, hey, look, Batista actually has won a Rumble before instead of just saying it on commentary, show how Batista won the Royal Rumble. Instead of John Cena and Randy Orton having one promo tonight, why in the blue hell did none of them have a match? Overall, though, like I said, it was cool seeing some of the older guys. It was cool seeing, seeing some of the legends, even though they, most of them didn't really do much besides stand there. But other than that, this old school Raw was just a decent episode of Monday Night Raw to borderline probably bad episode of Monday Night Raw. The only thing that really saved this episode for me was really too cool. Jake the Snake coming back, Punk versus Reigns, the worm by Scotty Tuhati, and 
maybe that Bad News Barrett segment. Oh, yeah, Alberto Del Rio called out Batista. I forgot to mention that. That was actually a pretty decent segment. But, yeah, I, I like that. Alberto Del Rio made a claim for a Bumble, even though we know he's not going to win it. But still, I liked it. Anyways, guys, what's your thoughts about this old school Raw? Comment down below. Leave a like if you liked this video. Dislike if you didn't like the video. And tell me how I can improve my videos in the future. Tomorrow, i got an NFL recap for you guys on the Houston Texans. So if you're a Texans fan, stay tuned for that. Anyways, guys, if you guys like me, follow me on Twitter at ChisAuto68. I'm out of here. Hope you guys have yourself a good evening. Peace!